This Lightboard video aims to provide you with a quick way to remember the lumbosacral plexus and the nerve innervation associated with the lower limb. So I, although I have gone through this in my lecture, I am going to go through it again just in terms of how we draw out the lumbar plexus and the sacral plexus and the major peripheral nerves stemming from each vertebral level. So a short way to remember this is to use the acronym or the mnemonic with the lumbar plexus, which is going to be some individuals in Georgia like facing off. Okay, so if we draw this out then, we're going to draw vertebral levels from T12 to L4. And we're going to draw lines stemming out of each with both a ventral and a dorsal rami. So from T12 then, there are three major nerves that are going to then stem from the rami. So specifically, our first one, so consistent with sum, is going to be our subcostal nerve. And then we're going to join up T12 and L1. And just to remember, I usually just put dots to help me indicate or work back to what the origin of each nerve is going to be. So then stemming from here, we're going to give rise to two peripheral nerves. So please note that this is going to be variable depending on which textbook you refer to. But according to Gray's Anatomy, the 40th edition, stemming from T12 and L1, we're going to have our individuals, which is going to be the iliohypogastric. And then the second one in is going to be our ilioinguinal nerve. Okay, so then what happens is from the rami associated with L2 and L3, so if we use the ventral rami, and if we group these two together, the main peripheral nerve that is going to be formed is going to be our lateral femoral cutaneous nerve. Okay, so we have missed out Georgia. So Georgia is going to form from a mountain between L1 and L2. So this is going to be our genitofemoral nerve. Okay, so then if we keep going, the rest of the branches or the rami from L2, L3, as well as this ventral rami from L4 is going to form the longest or the biggest nerve associated with the lumbar plexus, which is going to be our femoral nerve. Lastly, the off in our mnemonic is going to correspond to origins from L2, L3 and L4, which is going to then be our obturator nerve. So this is a way to then remember the lumbar plexus. So remembering that the lumbar plexus is then going to supply most of the anterior compartments of the leg, as well as the pelvis. We also know, however, that we have contributions associated with the sacral plexus, which is going to supply the posterior aspect, as well as the lower leg and dorsum of the foot. So the acronym or the mnemonic that we use to remember this one then is going to be some individuals sit pondering precariously. And to help me remember how to draw this out, we have on mountains. So this one is then going to be the sacral plexus. So if we then draw this out, so if we continue down L5, S1, S2, S3 and S4, and we draw in both the ventral and dorsal rami, 
and for S4 we only have to draw the superior rainbow. If we link these up then, and we only have to link the ventral or superior rami of L S4 with S3. So on mountains comes into it with respect to we create three mountains and just pretend there's snow on our mountains. And then we have a plateau associated with L4 to S1. So once you remember this then, we can then draw a stem coming from the superior aspect of our plateau, which is going to be the first major peripheral nerve, or some, which is going to be our superior gluteal nerve. The second one then, so our inferior gluteal nerve, is going to stem from our first mountain. So S is then going to be our sciatic nerve, keeping in mind that there are two branches originating from the sciatic. So you have our tibial branch and the common fibula. So remembering that the origins are going to be different for these. So if we go from L4 all the way down to S3, and we just link these up, we're going to have the tibial branch of the sciatic nerve. And then our common fibular branch is going to originate from L4, but only down to S2. Okay, if we keep going then, our next peak is going to correspond to the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. And then our last one is going to be the pudendal nerve. Okay, so this provides you with a quick overview on how to remember the lumbosacral plexus and how to draw it out in an exam if need be in order to remember the major peripheral nerves associated with both plexes as well as the origin associated with each of the nerves. Thank you very much for your attention.